Greetings, fellow armchair imagineers. Tiki here. And Adventure Voodoo. And welcome to Nuts and Bolts, the show where we dive into amusement parks from the other side of the Disney pond. Yes. yes. Speaking of ponds, we're going to SeaWorld today. And diving. Oh. Yeah, that, that slogan really makes a lot of sense. <laughs> we're diving just like SeaWorld. Ah, I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, topical humor. <laughs> uh, apply directly to your score, to your source. All right, so, uh, oh yeah, theme world. Probably, <laughs> probably the most controversial theme park chain of the last year, thanks to one little thorn in their side that we've already talked about. Uh, Fetcher Blue, do you want to quickly go over Blackfish for the few people that don't know about it? Let me preface this by saying that I'm very biased. Blackfish is a very biased... Blackfish um, is also very biased, so... Yes, it is. <laughs> but, but Blackfish is a very, very biased documentary put out by CNN that um, talks about how SeaWorld allegedly mistreats their orcas. And it focuses specifically on Tilikum. Or Tilikum, I don't know. And he apparently killed some guys, some, some people. And it was like a horror movie. Yeah. The way they frame it. Too. Yeah, you know, according to Blackfish, this orca whale stripped a man and <laughs> ate his parts. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this whale is just a mass serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's essentially... Like, Blackfish is literally just, like, a serial killer movie, except with a killer whale... <laughs> Yeah. So take that what you will for all that all the credentials it has as a documentary. <laughs> oh god, oh lord. <laughs> uh having said that, Adventure Blue Dude, I think it's safe to say that while Blackfish does definitely over sensationalize the issue, uh I don't know, I do think it is an important issue, and it's not something that I want to just kind of, like, brush over and just point and laugh at Blackfish and be like, oh, ha ha, they're all ridiculous, because, no, you know, these fucking animals, they deserve, you know, they deserve a, a living habitat that's, you know, that's very, uh, first rate, and... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting my words wrong. Tiki can't speak words. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It is an important issue, and like animals, both sea and land, and air, um, should be treated respectfully and correctly. But my knowledge, I still think that SeaWorld treats them well. I absolutely think that SeaWorld has made it basically their mission statement as a company to pretty much... Uh, be innovative with the art of preserving killer whales and other sea creatures. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And so having said that, it's like what they do, and especially what we're going to talk about, is very state-of-the-art. Uh, you know, of course, me here, here I go with my Discovery Kingdom comparisons again. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we've actually had uh, a couple killer whales come and go at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom and Marine World over the years. Uh, the last one was Shuka. I believe... I, uh, is Shuka... I, feel free in the comments to correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I, I think Shuka went to San Antonio Sea World. Uh, now, guess what? Fucking uh, Discovery Kingdom, I feel like, tries to do the same thing with killer whales that Sea World does, uh, but with dolphins. Because their park is just all about fucking dolphins. <laughs> so they have uh, they have a Dolphin Harbor stock show, and then they have Drench. And honest to God, I could not tell you what the difference is. Mm. <laughs> Except Drench is like all high tech and it has like cameras and shit to film audience reactions. Like that's weird. Wow. Oh. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> But, uh, I, I don't know, it's weird, but actually the thing that I kind of wanted to talk about before we get into the main subject, uh, a little interesting tidbit, is uh, quite a few years ago, like, I'd say this this thing's probably about ten years old at this point, getting right around a decade since they put this in, um, it's hard to remember the park without it now, but uh, 
they essentially put uh, put an ocean habitat in between this long walkway that they had that was like kind of separating uh, Pikachu and Roar from the rest of the park. Mm. And uh, so now it's this area called Ocean Discovery. And what it has it has a stingray pool, um, a cool little penguin exhibit that is probably my favorite animal exhibit in the whole park now. Penguin Passage, yay! <laughs> And uh, they also have a dolphin pool, and this pool is, it's like, it's I think it's just called Dolphin Encounter, and it's essentially what SeaWorld's doing with their orcas, except on a much smaller budget, so it's basically like, it's themed to be like a, you know, like a natural, like a natural tide pool or whatnot that, uh, you know, that a dolphin would swim around in, mm -hmm. and it looks really cool, but, uh, I don't know, I'm just saying, like, a uh, it is interesting how we do uh, how we do these conservation things, and so, anyways, anyways, mm -hmm. my pre ramble. Uh, do you want to tell the audience what SeaWorld has announced? SeaWorld has announced. I'm sorry. And why we are here to discuss it? Ah, SeaWorld has announced a state of the art uh, animal enclosure for their whales, and it's kind of weird and very interesting. Essentially, they're they seem to be making it more natural. Oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. And I don't know all the details because it's been a few days since I've read the press release. But there's going to be a beach. There's going to be like a huge, gigantic whale habitat. Mm. Uh, what else is there going to be? Okay, so essentially it's going to be... Uh, you're right. There's going to be the beach, which is going to be on ground level. Mm. And uh, and it's crazy. You know, there there's like these... Uh, these geysers and stuff. Apparently, at least looking at the concept, looking at the concept art, just it looks very naturalistic. Like I must say, like if it looks anything like the concept art, it's going to be really impressive because it essentially does look like just a fucking beach filled with killer whales swimming around. And it looks like scale wise, it looks cool too. Like it does look like something that genuinely a killer whale would have a fun time swimming around in. You know what I mean? It doesn't look like the goddamn, like, uh, dreaded whale barn from Blackfish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it actually looks really nice. Yeah, and the really interesting thing about this, uh, about this Blue Rill project that they're calling it, though, is that they're, uh, I, I don't, I don't exactly know how this works, but apparently you can go down and see the, uh, like, there's a giant... Uh, there's a giant observation area that's kind of, like, underwater. Mm. And, well, you know, at least it's meant to, you know, like, you go down and it's just, like, a giant tank. Uh, you know, the glass just, like, encapsulates, like, the whole room. And basically it's, like, you get you get a view of the, uh, of the entire beach area from, you know, from, from down below, from underwater level. Mm. Which, yeah, I must say this, uh, excuse me, going back to uh, to my Discovery Kingdom comparisons again. <laughs> Interesting, because goddamn, I really want to visit SeaWorld now, because they really are doing a lot of things that remind me of what Discovery Kingdom does, but just on, like, a, on a way bigger budget. So, uh, I don't, like, Discovery Kingdom, they have this, uh, the walrus experience. And what that is, it's interesting, because you enter through it, right? And, uh, and there's this... And there's this tank that you see, and the tank has, you know, these walruses in it and whatnot. And, uh, you there? Yes. Oh, sorry. And, uh, so the tank has these walruses, and so, you know, you can see him kind of swimming by the tank. And then you go up to ground, you know, you, uh, walk up this ramp, and then you see that it's kind of themed to, like, a natural habitat. Like, there's, like, these icebergs and stuff. Uh, so it's, like, what they're doing with these killer whales is really not much different than that. Except it's on an epic scale, and it just kind of blows my mind how cool it looks. Mm. Uh, I don't know, what do you think about it? Like, what do you think about the idea of uh, going down and, you know, having the observation area on top of everything else? That'll definitely be really impressive. Um, I mean, like, they've sort of done it before. Like, I remember SeaWorld in San Diego, they have, like, a whole, like, their whole shark exhibit. Yeah, it's like a tube entirely underwater at the bottom of the tank. It's not as big, but it's a similar idea. But it would be it'll well, be actually really those uh, those tubes. I, I think those are pretty common actually because we all yes, so do I. But it's still it's cool. 
Oh yeah, oh I, yeah, it's definitely really cool. We have one in a uh, six flight in a uh, Discovery Kingdom in our in our shark experience. Yeah, and actually, the coolest one I've ever been to is uh, I'm not sure if this is even still around, mm. but Fisherman's Wharf. It probably is. Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco has this thing called uh, Underwater World, and it's fucking amazing because what you do is you basically just take an elevator down, you know, into the bay. Mm. And it's basically like fucking Sea Lab. It's like all the like a, it's like a big series of glass tunnels with all these different viewing areas and all this different aquatic life. It's amazing. It really is. Like yeah. I don't know. I I'm gonna look up. A, I'm gonna see if I'm gonna see if there's any video footage of that. But uh, hmm. yeah, I I know it's cool because it's. Like, what they're doing is they're taking the same basic sort of philosophies that have been in place with marine parks like this for forever mm. and just, like, just jacking it up. It, like, this is, like, the freaking Barry Bond steroids of whale... <laughs> of killer whale <laughs> exhibits. I mean, it's just like, ridiculous. It's just jacked up to the extreme. <laughs> Oh, no, wow. it's, it looks like a really nice exhibit. Yeah, that's probably not the that's probably not the most flattering comparison to make. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, it's just like, yeah, look at us. We're just oh, we're the cool whale exhibit. I don't know. No, it's not, it's not really trying to be mock. Like, like, what do you think? It kind of has a living seas vibe to me a little bit, honestly. This new living uh, this new Sea World thing. Yeah, what do you think of that? I wouldn't quite say it has a Living Seas vibe. Uh, it's silly because Living Seas was more scientific. It has that's more of... what I'm going. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting with this, though, to tell you the truth, is, like... Like, especially with the way that it's set up with the, uh, you know, with the natural beach and everything. I mean, you're right. It's definitely more like, of an observation type thing. To me, it seems more like what the Living Seas was originally going to be. Where it's more exploratory and about natural, like the natural beauty of the ocean. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but interesting nonetheless. You know what I'm really curious about, though, and that I don't think they made really clear? What? Uh, how exactly is this going to attach to the actual stadium? I'm not sure. I'm at... It'll be really weird in San Diego. Why? Really weird. Um, because <laughs> I've never been to a Sea World, so explain. There's two stadiums in San Diego. Uh huh. One is on the bay. The other, if I remember correctly, is in like the dead center of the park. <laughs> oh god. So it's gonna be weird. Yeah, yeah. Though of course they they probably could just build it into their dolphin exhibit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a while since I've been there, so I could be totally wrong. I know for a fact that the one stadium is right on the bay. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was really cool. Like, I, I jet skied to SeaWorld. But, um, I'm pretty sure the other one is, like, smack dab in the middle of the park. Which will be weird. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Do you know if, uh, if all the SeaWorlds are kind of designed the same way where they have the bay sort of thing going on? No. No. You don't know? I don't think so, because... Orlando is landlocked. Oh, okay, right, right. Yeah. The, I don't, and I, I, no, I, I mean, doubt they would have made it. But I mean, you can always build a man-made bay. That's what I'm saying. I doubt they would have, because it's right off of International Drive as well. So, okay. I mean, they could have, and I could be totally wrong, because I, I haven't been to SeaWorld in Florida since I was, like, one. But, um... <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure San Antonio... Is that still open? I think so, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure San Antonio is right on the bay. Mm -hmm. But okay. I don't quote me. Yeah, 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 it's definitely <laughs> a, the article specifically mentioned that all three of the Sea World parks are going to be getting this treatment. I mm. must say, that's very ambitious. You know it what is. I mean? That's a fuck ton of money. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I really do hope that with this, uh, with this project... And I know it won't. I know it won't. But 
uh, it won't silence the protesters, but I, I hope it at least kind of goes goes towards uh, repairing the park's public image. <laughs> because I really do think it's unfair that, you know, it's like just a fucking documentary that turns your killer whale into a fucking, you know, yeah. literal killer. Cause, <laughs> An Oscar fodder documentary ruins a company. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly. sad. That is absolutely sad. And especially because, like, SeaWorld, like we said, they have been going, like, I mean, excuse us if we're, like, ignorant and if, you know, if you can pull up some, like, facts or statistics that SeaWorld treats their killer whales like shit, but from all I've re for, researched about SeaWorld, uh, mostly from mostly for, from what I've read about them personally from uh, Rob Alvey of Theme Park Review, uh... It, they just seem like the most down-to-earth company in the world when it comes to, like, they genuinely, their number one concern is the health and, you know, maintaining the health and safety of these creatures. Yeah. So, you know, they're not... I, I can tell you one thing. I can go on about how fucking Discovery Kingdom, they literally just make their dolphins dance. <laughs> it's just, like, it, it's just, the you know, the moment in the... Uh, in Muppets Most Wanted, and now I have to dance, monkey dance. I mean, that, that's basically what it is. It's like that whole drink show I told you about with the camera, mm. you know, and the audience reaction. It's just like, all right, everybody, let's welcome out the Dolphins, and let's play the latest pop single. Dance, Dolphins, do your dance. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Dolphins, do your dance for us. Isn't it spectacular? Now let's get an audience reaction. Woo! <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> oh, God. No, honestly, I think that uh, Discovery Kingdom is a park that could benefit from just... People are going to kill me for saying this. I don't want them to lose their animals. I just want lo I just want them to lose their dolphins, because I don't think they treat their dolphins that well. I don't think their dolphin shows are that entertaining, and the dolphin stadiums take up a fuck ton of real estate. So, uh, <laughs> that's what bothers me about SeaWorld. It's really weird. Yeah, what bothers me now is that people are trying to sign petitions to get SeaWorld to just stop. Housing whales. Not only to stop housing whales, but to free them into the ocean. Uh, that is, okay, you see, that is just the stupid thing, because it's yeah. like, hello, uh, that is just like a, hello, McFly. Yeah, yeah you know, all like, these whales that were born in captivity and know nothing yeah, else. <laughs> Let's bring them out into the real ocean. Nature Let's does not work that way. Just it open the gates and say, silly. fuck off. That <laughs> That is absolutely stupid. Isn't isn't there a Simpsons or a Family Guy clip or something like that of Free Willy where it's like, uh, Free Willy gets freed and at the end and then he instantly gets like killed by a shark or something like. That's Family Guy. After he gets freed. And that happened in real life. Really? The the um whale from Free Willy they actually released him into the wild, and he died. I don't know how, but he died. Oh dear God, that's depressing. Yeah, but it's it, people don't understand that animals that are born in captivity can't survive in the wild because though there is natural instinct, they don't learn or understand the way things work outside. It's like right. if exactly. it's like if somebody who was living in New York City oh, tried to pull a Henry David Thoreau and just do Walden for six months. <laughs> just way out in the middle of nowhere, like like hundred miles from civilization, they would not live. <laughs> <laughs> like if they just said, "Fuck it, I'm going to the woods," that would not happen. And, and I feel yeah. the same way if I tried to move to New York City, because <laughs> uh, you know, because it's like Petaluma. It's not like the, it's not the smallest town in the world, but it's definitely like uh, you know, it's definitely not a big town. Yeah. But New York, it's like, God, one of my things is just being surrounded by people in New York who are constantly surrounded. I, I would not last in New York, no. <laughs> Especially because I'm so used to the cushy, like, sub, like constantly 70 degrees no matter what season it is, NorCal weather. <laughs> no, I would not last in New York. <laughs> oh, God, oh, God. 
But yeah, pe people need to understand that C that SeaWorld is doing what they can and they are treating their animals well. And freeing the animals is not going to solve the problem. It'll just make it worse. Yeah, essentially, if SeaWorld freed all their animals, you'd have a bunch of dead whales floating around in the air. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, I mean really? That's just, that's, just, that's just the situation. I hate to paint such a vivid picture, but... Let me say that I don't support this at all, but if for some reason anything was to be passed, the only thing I would ever agree with, to the extent that I could agree with it, was if they banned breeding and said, once these whales are dead, that's it. Okay, yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah, I can totally see that, for sure, for sure. Uh, I don't know, but that would be sad. It would be very sad, and I wouldn't support it, but I mean, if the, if it had to happen and there were options and that was the uh, one of the options, that would be the option I would support. Do you think Zero could survive without killer whales? I don't I Probably not. I mean, they're they're really good parks on their own, but but the killer whales are like their mainstay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'd be like Disneyland without uh, you know, without the the mountains. I was gonna say, don't you dare say the castle. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because no one would notice it's gone. They could just like put a tarp up front. Nobody will know. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> just install a tree. <clears throat> whoa, whoa, are you making fun of the size of our castle? Yes. <laughs> ours is bigger. Yes, I know, but ours is more charming. <laughs> I'm sorry. Does yours have a grotto? <laughs> I genuinely don't know, does it? Uh, no. Okay, so there it you go. It has a fountain. Point it is very three. shiny. What? It's very shiny. What, your castle? Yeah, our castle. It's very shiny. Yeah. Well, yeah. our was designed by Walt Disney himself. Well, some people think bigger is better. You know you know what my favorite part of the castle is at Disneyland? And we should probably wrap this up after this point. Yes. Uh, my favorite aspect of the castle at Disneyland is how cool it is, uh, the whole... The whole thing about how the front should be the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I love that every time I every time I'm like in the dark rag courtyard, I look at the you know, I look at the back of the castle and I just think what it would look like in the front. I'm just like, oh man, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but anyways, anyways, final thoughts on this uh SeaWorld project. It's a great project. I really hope it helps quell whatever the fuck is going on between all the activists, <laughs> but I don't think it will, sadly. Yeah, like I said, I don't think it's going to silence any of the protesters. I just hope that in the public's eye, yeah. they'll kind of see the protesters for the radicals that they really are. And, oh, yeah. you know, like, again, I don't want to call everyone who's against SeaWorld, like, because I, I have friends that, that kind of agree with the points that Blackfish makes about uh, not necessarily the I don't know. It's hard to say because it's like you have such respect for these animals, and you don't want to see them like. Ah, I don't know. It's a look. All I'm saying is that I don't want to come off like everyone who is against SeaWorld is like some lunatic freaking conspiracy theorist. That's all. I'm saying. Neither do I. I mean, like if if people think that, more power the fuck to you. But I think a lot of it is people being misinformed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. By yeah. watching Blackfish and looking at nothing else. <laughs> but, of course, that's how misinformation happens. They don't see the whole story. Right, right. Yeah. They only well, watch the Oscar fodder. I, I do think that it's very... Uh, I mean, God, it's it's one of those things that really does make me want to go to SeaWorld, genuinely, and I've never been. So it's like, from a marketing standpoint, they've got one person... <laughs> SeaWorld's nice. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'm just very intrigued about it based on the whole, like, Discovery Kingdom on steroids element it has going on. Oh, yeah. It. It's really cool. Uh-huh. The rides are really good as well. Yeah, you know, it's like... And that's kind of... It's interesting because it's like with Discovery Kingdom, you have uh, 
you know, the rides are, of course, now the main attraction. It didn't used to be that way in the 90s. Fucking Six Flags bought the whole thing out and mm. then added the rides. But, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the rides are the main attraction, so I feel like, like I said, I, I would... I would genuinely be over the moon if the park just one day decided, like, hey, let's get rid of dolphins. Yeah. And fucking free up both those giant stadiums that are right in the middle of the goddamn park, right next to each other, and I'd be thrilled. I'd be fucking thrilled. Not necessarily because I think they're doing a shitty job, you know, taking care of the dolphins. I don't know how good of a job they're doing, but just because... What they do with the dolphins is just not engaging at all. It's just like, literally, it's just like, hey, dolphins, here's some fucking pop music. Dance to it. <laughs> and so, I don't know. But, uh, you know, but see, and it's, it's an interesting point, because I genuinely think that if Discovery Kingdom just ripped out the dolphins, it, there'd be some people who were definitely upset, but I think overall, a couple new coasters in lieu of the stadium would kind of generally, you know, appease the uh, appease the public. But anyways, anyways. Uh, so, you know, I'd say it's safe to say that we both hope that this goes over well. And uh, anything anything else you want, you want to say? Not really. Not really? All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, me and my Discovery Kingdom references have dragged the show on long enough. All right. So, uh, yeah. See you later, folks. <laughs>